All right, here we go with chapter 10. Section one is all about area of parallelograms and triangles. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with the area of a triangle. Okay, A is going to stand for area. We're also gonna use a B, which is gonna stand for the base. We're gonna use an H, which is gonna stand for the height. All right, so now the area of a triangle, which some of you may know, is one half base times height. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that into action. All we have to do on these two examples is we have to identify our base and our height, and then plug it into the formula and solve. All right, so on this triangle, what do you think is the base? Okay, the base is going to be 30 centimeters. This is our base right here. It's not always the bottom. It is always the side that your height goes to. All right? So now, our height then is going to be 13 centimeters. And I want you to take note that height is always measured as an altitude in a triangle. Always goes from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. That opposite side is the one that we use as our base. All right, so once we've identified those two things, we just have to plug it in. So A is equal to 1 half 30, which is our base, times 13, which is our height. Now we just have to simplify and solve. So A is going to equal to 1 half and 30 times 13 is actually 390, okay? So then 1 half times 390, if somebody wants to get a calculator and try and shout that answer out, go for it. It should be 195. Okay, and that is actually going to be centimeters squared. Take note of the centimeters squared when you're doing units in area. Okay, and that is the answer to our first example. Now let's look at our second example. We have three side lengths and no height that are actually labeled. All right, so we have to, we're going to have a little bit harder of a time identifying base and height in this one. So we have our base which is going to be equal to 12 centimeters. And what do you think our height is going to be? It's actually going to be 5 centimeters. Okay, It is the perpendicular distance from a vertex to the opposite side. So 5 centimeters in a right triangle, it's always a side. It's a leg. All right, so we just plug that in. A is equal to 1 half times 12 times 5. Okay, so A is equal to 1 half times 60, which is equal to, A is going to be equal to 30. Again, centimeters squared. We have centimeters times centimeters, and centimeters times centimeters, so centimeters squared. Okay, and that's how you find the area of a triangle. So let's put it into use in the real world. Moving down the page, example two. Okay, the front of a garage is a square 15 feet on each, on each side with a triangular roof above the square. The height of the triangular roof is 10.6 feet. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and be our height. It even identifies it in the problem as the height. So it says use the area formulas for rectangles and triangles to find the area of the front of the garage. Now we haven't gone over the area of a rectangle maybe in a while, but if you don't remember, I'm gonna write it as this area of a rectangle is gonna be equal to the length times the width, okay? And then we have the area of our triangle, which we just learned above, is gonna be equal to one half 
base times height. So we're going to do one piece at a time, and then we're going to just add them together. So let's do our triangle first. I'm going to use the triangle symbol now instead, so I don't have to take up so much space on the paper. Okay, the area of the triangle is going to be equal to one half. What is our base going to be? 15, good. And our height, it tells us in the problem, it is 10.6. 10.6 times 15 is actually 159. So this is going to be equal to 1 half times 159. Okay, divide that by 2 or multiply by 1 half. And your area of the triangle is going to be equal to 79.5. What's our unit going to be? Feet square or square feet. Okay. Now let's move over here. We're going to do the area of our rectangle. And that's going to be equal to what is our length? 15. And our width is also 15. It is a square. All right, so we have the area of the rectangle then is equal to 225 feet squared. You're running off the paper a little bit there. All right, so then when we go to find the area of the garage, it's just simply going to be 225 plus 79.5, which is equal to, those of you that are speeding on a calculator will probably beat me, 304.5 square feet. Okay, anytime that you have a figure like this that has two different geometric Shapes, find the area of both of them, and add them together to find the surface area. Or just the area. Surface area is referred to in three-dimensional figures. Okay, so 304.5 feet. Now, let's move on to finding the area of a parallelogram. I will tell you that the area of a parallelogram... The formula for it is actually just base times height. Now, let me show you a little bit of reasoning behind that. If you have a parallelogram, okay, and you split it in two, say I split it like this. As you can see, I have two congruent triangles. Okay, so the area of this triangle is one half base times height. The area of this triangle is one half base times height. Okay, so when they are congruent, it's going to be two times one half base times height. So as you can see, this two and this one half are actually going to cancel out, and therefore the area of a parallelogram is base times height. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this problem. Now that Height of a parallelogram is a perpendicular distance from one base to another. Okay? So it may not always be in the parallelogram. It may be outside, which we're going to get to in a minute. But it is always the perpendicular distance from one to the other, one base to another. Okay? So let's see. We have area equals the base which in this case, because our height goes from top to bottom, we're actually going to use the top okay, as our base. So we're going to use 12 times 3.1, which is our height. Multiply those two together, and you get 37.2 meters squared. Always keep your unit on there for preciseness. Okay? Now let's try one more. You're going to have to draw this one. It's not on your papers already. 
but here it is. Okay, go ahead and take a second and draw that out, and then I will explain it a little bit, and we'll get to solving it. Okay, this is what I was telling you about where the height is not necessarily inside the parallelogram. Okay, we're actually not solving for area. We are solving for a missing value, a missing dimension. But we're going to use area to find that. So here's what we're going to do. Because we know that this height right here is from top to bottom, and we know what one of the bases is, which is the bottom, we can go ahead and find the area of the parallelogram. All right, so we're going to do the area is equal to the base times the height. So area is going to be equal to the base, which is 10, times the height, which in this case, from top to bottom, is 12. All right, so the area of the figure is 120 inches squared or square inches, however you like to say that. Okay, now we know that this H up here is the height from left to right, or right to left, whichever way you're looking at it, all right? So it goes from side to side. And we know one of the sides, okay? So the figure hasn't changed. We're gonna use the area we already know to find that H. We're going to use the same formula. It's going to be A is equal to base times height. We just know different variables this time. The area is going to be equal to 120. Okay? And we know our one base, just because it's not the bottom, it's still a base. So our base is going to be 13, and we're looking for our height. Okay? Now, you should know how to solve this. We're just going to divide by 13. Okay, and then we have the H is equal to, find your calculators again. H is going to be equal to 9.23 inches. Miss Tackett and Miss Tinklepaw will be very appreciative of you keeping your units in there. All right, and that is your answer.